Howdy, I'm Lee Wilson, and this is TGO Wyoming. And tonight I am down here in my office slash studio doing a little bit of video editing. I'm going to take care of some more on-the-move videos, and I invite you guys to join along so I can show you the process of how quick and easy it is. I'm going to be using Adobe Premiere Pro, Adobe After Effects, and Photoshop. And with those three things combined, I'm going to have some uh, easy editing to do. So I invite you to join along and watch and see how I get all this done in a fast and efficient manner. Okay, we're going to start off with a little bit of organization. So you can see here I have Windows Explorer opened up and I am in my Wilson W Photography Drive or my Wilson Photography W Drive. I have a secondary 2 terabyte Western Digital Black Drive that I use for all of my photography storage, all my videography storage, everything like that. And I have everything broken down to my videos, TGO Wyoming projects on the move, and of course this is episode 54, or why I carry Glocks that I'm currently working on. So spoiler alert, you know what episode 54 is going to be. Now I have a few different files here. Here's my original GoPro, fo GoPro footage that I have renamed. I always rename the footage to the project title that I'm working on. I have a JPEG, which is going to be the title plate here that I'm going to upload to YouTube. I have my After Effects file and I have a audio recording that I have done on my Zoom H4n. So I'm using my Rode SmartLav Plus going into my Zoom H4n, and that's how I'm capturing my audio. So we'll start off with Photoshop. Now I do everything in a batch, right? So what I'll do is I'm going to record a bunch of videos. I record these every day or every other day, but I only release them three times a week. So I have a pretty good stockpile of videos to release and so I will get everything organized into their folders, I'll rename all the file, all the video files, and then I go through and I just make all of the title plates. So what we have here is Adobe Photoshop opened up and I have multiple layers. I have my text layer for template, I have my tire track layer right there, the on the move text layer right there, and I have my rectangle there, various effects adjusted to them, and a background photograph that I took uh, last year. So I will simply just double click into the template and then type whatever project name I'm working on. So in this case, it would be why I carry Glocks. All right, so here at this point now we have the title is just too large. So I'm always going to have my show transform controls up there and I am just going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit so I can actually see what I'm working on. Go back to that. You can click here in the corner on your transform controls and then hold down shift. And I can actually just redo the title. And of course I'll move it over until it is centered right there. Get my little pink line in there and make sure everything is in good shape. So I want it back where it originally was and that is how it would go. Alright, but we're not going to do that today because we just uh, already have that made. So we'll just close out of Photoshop here. We do not want to apply and no we don't want to save the changes. So we're back into here, but that is how I get this. Sometimes I'll, of course, on this one I did a little differently than I just showed you. In After Effects, this is how I do all my titles. Now once I get everything done, I'll go through and do the same thing. I'll just batch it out in After Effects. And I always do a Save As. So I have a master title plate that I use, which is all of my various bits and pieces. So there's my tire tracks there, everything. And I'll actually just, you know, highlight, double click, go in here, change it around, and we can scrub through. You can see the animation of the Goodyear Wrangler and, of course, my masking job. I am not an After Effects guru. I am working on it, but this is pretty simple, and I still think it is pretty effective as far as a title plate goes. So I'll have that run out, and, of course, you know, it's five seconds long, and then I would do a file save as, save as, and I would literally just put that right that project right into my folder. So we're going to go ahead and get out of After Effects, and we're going to pull up Premiere Pro now. Okay, so now here's where things get interesting. I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. 
Okay, we'll see how this loads. And I'm going to go ahead and browse. Uh, I'm working on another project right here. So we're going to go to TGO Wyoming Projects on the move. And we're going to go down to why I carry Glocks. Boom. So we're going to select our folder. And this is where we want everything to be. So leaving my scratch disks and everything pretty much standard, just same as projects. So that way everything's on my W drive. I'm going to hit OK. And Premiere Pro is going to think, 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 and we'll eventually have a brand new project file. I am not running on a fast computer. This is an old Intel Core i5 Ivy Bridge. Yeah, seriously, it's an Ivy Bridge. I am running that old a machine. But I am working on getting a new machine, so hopefully that will definitely be in the future and my goodness we've got some new looks here on Premiere Pro 2017 look at that it's a uh, it's a little different I just updated the Creative Cloud so let's see how everything goes we will drop this down we'll go to on the move pop that down we're gonna go to uh, why I carry Glocks. Now we've got a couple of things here. We have we need to import our actual footage. We need to import our audio file. And we need to import our After Effects project. Now this is why I save things as an After Effects project as opposed to rendering them out because I'm using Adobe's dynamic link which is just fantastic so what's gonna happen is the dynamic links gonna open up uh, assuming everything still is working the same we're gonna have our sil solids folder there and we want the tire tracks composition there so now over in our project folder we should have three different things man this is a lot different so hopefully I'm not gonna screw up anything here so now we have our Why I Carry Glocks, and we're going to see we're at 29.97 frames per second. So we want to open this up, and we're going to start scrubbing through the footage and figuring out where to go. Now I'm going to use my audio function here. Come on. Does this not work the way it used to? Well, back in the Day. There's effects, controls, audio clip mixer, metadata. Interesting. We'll see what's going on here. Well, here's a, a funky little thing going on. Make sure, yep, audio is up at full. We are not getting any audio. That's a little strange. All right, so I fixed the problem. We now actually have audio, so there we go. That's our audio track. Now, what happened here is I had a cached data issue. With the update to Premiere Pro CC, I ran into a serious problem where it just would not grab the audio because of pre-cache, and that was actually a really easy fix. We actually run search, run. We go to our run, and we have percentage, app data, percentage. We hit OK. This brings us up into our app data here, and then all I did was go to Adobe, and then down here to Common, and I had two things. I had Media Cache, which is now just three files, which where it was about 1,600 files, and Media Cache files. So here we have all the conformed data, the CFA files, IMS files, all this good stuff. All I did was highlight everything. This was about 2,500 files in this folder previously. And I just deleted them all, freed up about 60 gigs of space on the hard drive. And boom, I was in business. So now we have audio. All right, so what I like to do is I'm going to scrub through here. And we're going to go ahead and check our volume level here. And we'll play. So here is the start of the video. I know that I'm going to scrub through here a little bit. Take a vape. All right.
right, so I know somewhere in here is where I'm going to say, Howdy, I'm Lee Wilson, and this is TGO Wyoming. So we're going to go to right there, jump back over to our video, and play. Okay. All right. Howdy, I'm Lee Wilson, and this is TGO Wyoming, on the move. And today on my drive home, I want to talk about why I carry Glocks. And this is kind of a an elaborate story here. Okay, so we're good there. So we know that somewhere right in here is where we want to start the audio. Okay. So, howdy. I know that's where I say howdy. We'll start right here. I'm going to hit I for my endpoint. And I know that the rest of this is good. So I'm going to scrub through. And it does help the channel grow. So, as always, thanks again for watching. Stay safe, shoot straight. I'll see y'all next time. And that's where we're going to hit O for our out point. So we can hit Shift I to go to our end point. Check it out. I'm Lee Wilson, and this is TG. All right, so I'm hitting spacebar there to pause and play. So we're going to go ahead and drag this, both audio clip and video clip and drop it right down here into our timeline. And that's going to create a timeline that is actually conformed to the exact same dimensions and frame rate as our video clip. So next thing I need to do is I need to sync up my audio. So I'm going to go ahead and drag my audio down below there. And I'm going to highlight both of these, or all of these. And I'm going to right click. And we are going to go to synchronize, right? So we're going to synchronize the audio based on track one, which is our audio track one there. We're going to hit OK. OK, so now our audio is synced up. You grow up in a gun culture household, and you end up associating a certain gun. And I'm actually going to mute audio track one with your father. And for me, that was the Sig Sauer P2. I can actually solo this P2 here. Six. Or we can solo this one. So that was the V gun. So there's a huge difference. Huge difference in the audio quality between the Zoom and what we have running from the GoPro. Gosh, Adobe, you changed all the little circles here. You're messing with me. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and zoom into our track here. And I'm going to jump over here. We're going to go ahead, highlight this, right click. And I'm actually going to unlink these files, delete my original audio file, and then boom, move that up. So that way we're working right there. Next, I go over to my razor tool, and I'm just going to go ahead and cut the audio file here. I'm going to scrub all the way over here, cut the audio file there, go back to our regular pointer tool, grab this, delete, zip back over to the beginning, grab that, delete it. Okay, right click, ripple delete, and now I'm going to go ahead, grab these, and link them. So now this is just one audio file, or Howdy. one file. I'm Lee Wilson, and this is TGO Wyoming. And we have on a perfect move. synchronization on our and audio. today on my drive. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a default transition here. Shift I to jump back over. Howdy. We have I'm Lee our, our nice little fade in, right? Lee Wilson, and this is TGO Wyoming. On the move. So next thing I want to do is add the title plate. Wyoming on the move. So we're gonna back up here. The TGO Wyoming. So I'm gonna wait till I say TGO Wyoming, and now I'm actually going to just drag this in here, and we're gonna zoom in for fine detail. So we know that at this point in the playhead, that's where I'm gonna say on the move. So I'm gonna drag my file. Wait for it to preview up here in our program pane and we are going to just align it to where we've got a little bit of the tire tracks. Now what we have is Geo Wyoming on the move. And today on my drive home kind of I want to talk out. about why I carry Glocks. And this is kind of all right, so we're going to go ahead and zoom back out, make it a little easier to work with here. I'm Lee Wilson and this is TGO Wyoming on the move. And today on my drive home, I want to talk about why poorly because there's a lot going on in the system. But I'll go ahead, right click that, apply default I transitions carry that way. We and this is kind a of a nice fade out there. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out, move back over here. 
and apply default transitions. Now the reason I link these two files is that when I apply my default transitions, I want it to be applied to both tracks with my cross dissolve and my constant power. So boom, there we are. If they're not linked, I would have to do more clicking and apply a constant power to the other one. Shift I to go back to our playhead. So now we got to do a few more things. All right, so our audio level is pretty decent. Oh, I'm Lee Wilson, and We're this is TGO Wyoming six on, on the, the decibel move. meter here. And today and on my drive, pretty good, but it's not quite good enough. I like to clean up my audio a little bit, so I'm going to go over to my effects panel. We're going to go to audio effects, and I like to do a high pass filter. And the reason being is I still, even with the lavalier mic and everything, I still get a little bit of engine noise and everything. So I'm going to go here to high pass. I'm going to drag that onto my clip. So now we have our little FX button has turned purple there. So we can highlight that and go over to our effects controls. And we now have our volume there and we have our high pass filter. When you just drop it in, it said at 14 or 1495 hertz, home, I want to talk about which why I sounds horrible. So I am actually just going to get my air to my 60 hertz or my 60 seconds. This is kind of a, an elaborate story so here. So what we've got here So I'll start at the beginning. I grew up in a six-hour household. My dad's always carried SIGs. He's With had SIGs pass. for, I mean, as long as I've been alive, essentially. <clears throat> and excellent. you end up associating... Now, there's other things we can do. We can EQ this if we really want to. Um Honestly, I don't usually EQ, but I can. And Premiere Pro has a bunch of fantastic audio effects that you can use and not have to take this into Audition to really, really get it going. But, you know, there we have a parametric equalizer here. We could drop that on there. And we can jump over here, custom setup. And if I really wanted to, you know, boost the bass, I can hit that all in here. You know, let's give us like a mid-range bump of you know five decibels and kind of kick it up here you know bring it up bring this up you know maybe maybe kick our highs up a little bit we can adjust the cue here which is you know the sharpness of the adjustment they don't listen, really they call it cue and width i mean it's i've always called it cue in the audio world certain gun if you grow up in a gun culture so household you end up associating a certain gun with your father and for me that was the six hour p226 and that was the the gun that was dad right so logically as soon as i was old enough to have a handgun i went out and uh, my parents Help me purchase a Sig Sauer P225, which I still have. And that gun's actually been through multiple owners, yeah, no, including Clayton and Josh, so who you guys, if you're a longtime oh, viewer of the channel, presets, should be acquainted presets. with. And uh, it eventually came back around to me, There's but that was my first handgun preset. ever. And after moving away from Sigs, you know, I ended up flirting with a 1911 for a little while, but it was miserable to Turn carry. And I just should have gotten a Turn different on. 1911. It was not the not the exact one that I really wanted, but it was one I could afford at the time. Loudness maximizer. And then I had my Tauruses, uh, which were good guns, but timey radio. ended up selling those too, and kind of went back to my SIG. Rap vocals. Well, while I, while I was working at Sportsman's Warehouse, I uh, met my good friend Elliot Brass, and he's actually the reason I started working at Sportsman's. And he had a yep. Bowie so actually, Tactical Glock 19. Bother you can check out the equalizer. video I history and you can find that one. That's a, a good little video. You. He did a review. So what we've got here now is a fade in. We have our title plate there. And we've got a fade out in one track, essentially. So I'm going to go ahead and sh hit Shift I. Go back here. Hit I to set my in point. Shift O to go to my out point. Hit O to hit my out point. Control S to save my project because I am obsessive about saving my projects. Absolutely obsessive about saving my projects and you should be too. Next thing to do is this is pretty much done. So we're going to go ahead and go file, export. Oh, make sure we're selected here. Got to be down here in the timeline. File, export, media. Let's see if the new version of Premiere has destroyed and gotten rid of my sequence presets. Oh, good lord, what do we do? We've got source there, we've got output. Uh, do we want to match the sequence settings? No. Preset. 
Let's see here. Format. We're going to go to H264. Let's see. Please tell me you did not get rid of my presets. Oh, goodness. Yes, my preset is gone. No. All right. So, fortunately, there are a lot of good presets down in here. So, I'm going to go to hit YouTube 1080p HD. All right. So, this is going to give me a couple of things. Um, we're of course, doing the H.264 package, we're going to be in 1080p, 1920x1080 here. You know, we're going to have variable bit rate, one pass, 16 is our target bit rate. And everything looks pretty good. We want to use, um, I don't know, I usually don't use maximum render, but we can hit effects, we can go to Lumetri looks, and I really like using the... I uh, believe it is clean Kodak AHDR. So we can actually jump over here. You can check this out, right? This is just really doing nice things. I would normally do this with an adjustment layer in the timeline, but that tends to crash my computer. So I have to do this in rendering. But notice the difference between the color of my shirt, the outside here. Everything just looks a whole heck of a lot better. And we've got a bunch of different really nice ones. You know, there's Clean Kodak B, changes that around a little bit. We've got Clean Straight HDR. And there's, you know, I mean, Gold Heat. Yeah. We can make this Gold Tobacco. How about Gold Western? That's actually a very nice look, and I have actually used that in several different clips. But for now, let's check Fuji HDR. No, that's not the right one. I believe it is Kodak Clean HDR. Okay, so that's pretty good. And what I'd like to do is actually save this preset and call this on the move. That's what we've got setting up here. So now I've got the on the move preset and I'm going to go ahead and click on the output name here and that's when I was working on the urban homesteads. We're going to go back to on the move and we need to jump down to why I carry Glocks and I'm going to name this final. We're going to go ahead and hit save. So I'm thinking this looks I'm thinking that looks pretty good. That is definitely more Realistic. I don't know. Let's play with another one real quick. Let's see what else we've got. Maybe. Do I like the Fuji HDR a little better? I could have sworn it was Kodak A HDR. Maybe it was Kodak B. No, that doesn't look very good. Kodak C HDR. Oh, it doesn't look great either. Clean straight HDR. Boy, can't tell much of a difference there, can you? Let's see, anything else? Lumetri looks are very handy. It's just a nice way to add some extra pop. LDR. Not too bad. We're just going to go clean a HDR. Yep. Check this in a, whoa, that's not flattering, yep. Okay. Essentially just messes with the saturation a little bit, makes everything a little bit more saturated. I honestly don't know if that's more accurate representation of the color of my shirt or if that is, but you know what? I like that little extra dynamic, especially on the outside. So we're just going to go back up here, go to on the move. That's why we know we're at SL Clean H Kodak A HDR, and I think we're in pretty good shape. Audio ACC or AAC, 48 kilohertz bit rates are good. Multiplexer is fine. No captioning. We can actually publish to YouTube, but I don't do that because so these, of course, all get set up and delayed. So we're going to go ahead and queue this up. 
And this is going to open up Adobe Media Encoder. Absolutely fantastic program. And honestly, I use Media Encoder 99% of the time because I'm, of course, going to batch edit all of these and get everything rocking in one big shot. So, you know, run through six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them, queue them all up in Adobe Media Encoder, bada bing, bada boom, let them run and encode overnight, and I am done by morning, and everything I've, you know, edited is ready to go, and I can just jump into YouTube, upload everything, and we're in great shape. Now we're just waiting on Media Encoder to boot up. Again, this computer is ancient and old. It was originally my wife's drafting machine. Ooh, fancy new media encoder. Look at that. Way to go, Adobe CC 2017. Stepping up the game. Now, I'm sure there are a bunch of new options in Premiere Pro 17 that I don't know how to use yet. I will figure out what on earth they are. The last update, 2015.2.3 was very good, added a lot of new features, and I tell you what, Premiere Pro truly is just one of the best editing programs out there. It's from anything from you know, a, a short little eight minute video up to a feature length film, Premiere Pro can handle it and do it beautifully. So that's pretty much it. You know, I'm gonna get the media encoder running here after I get some more videos done and probably encode this one at the same time. And it's run a little long, but oh well. Hopefully you guys have found this entertaining and or educational, mostly educational on this one, although I hope I've entertained you a little bit. That is my goal, is to educate and entertain. So that's how an on-the-move video is made. I record them on the GoPro. I do audio with the Zoom H4n and the Rode Video or uh, Lav Mic Plus. Sorry, Smart Lav Plus. And it's just quick and easy, and if I even if I had a better machine, it would go even faster. So I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Hopefully this has given you some ideas. And if it hasn't, well, keep on editing with whatever you're editing on. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment box below. I do appreciate hearing from you guys. And as always, thanks for watching. Stay safe, shoot straight, and I'll see you all next time. Media Encoder. Finally booted up. Man, they changed this all around too.